Hello everyone, this is um, Gavin Pryor, and today we're going to be reading a creepypasta. Yep. Okay, so this creepypasta is called Broken Wires, and it's made by Marble Pines 4607 <laughs> Here I go with the story, and um... So here I go, and um, I'm about to read this. I'm going to skip the writer's note. And... Well, I don't know. Here we go. It had been a pretty normal day for Fandroid. Had a live stream going on and everything. He looked back and forth from his live chat to the game he had been playing, trying to answer as many people as he could while playing the latest Escape the Murderer Roblox games. This had gone on for a few hours before he finally decided to get off Roblox and work on something else for a change. The musical robot decided to look for a horror game online, something he wouldn't often do unless it was really requested by fans, and happened to stumble upon a game called Broken Wires. This seems like a fun, spooky game. <laughs> he said, his voice sounding a bit nervous. All right, everybody, he spoke up again with his cheery voice. I'm going to play this game. It says that it's a horror game, and I know many of you like horror games, so let's go ahead and play it. The robot chuckled as he moved the mouse to the play button. But as he moved the mouse, he felt a bit uneasy about his opinions. Uh, uh, on second thought, I'll be right back. I need to, uh, use the bathroom. <laughs> of course, nobody was fooled by this silly move. Robots don't need to use the bathroom. They don't even have those kind of parts to do stuff like that. Everyone in the chat started to get a bit angry, calling Fandroid a baby or a scaredy cat because he wouldn't press play. The robot stayed silent for a while, trying to see if had tricked at least a few people with his bathroom excuse. But of course nobody seemed to have fallen for it, he sighed, thinking his plan would have worked. Alright you guys, fine, I'll play. Just don't call me a baby, he huffed slightly. Fandroid proceeded to moving the mouse onto the play button and clicked it, causing the game to start up. The robot felt a bit scared after clicking play. Not just because he hated horror games, but because he didn't know what to expect from such a name like Broken Wires. Uh, okay, there. Happy? I clicked play. And now I'm going to play this horror game. He shivered as he said those last words. Horror game. He didn't know why, but he had shuddered as he said those words. But something just felt off. Really off. The game loaded up, and it shone what you usually expect in a horror game. It had that same creepy atmosphere, the ambience music, and even the quiet sound effects that made you feel on edge. So let's see what we've got to work with. Fandroid said as he looked around the room, looking for anything he could collect or grab, hold off. Melody hovered into the room behind Fandroid. Hey Fandroid, what you playing? She asked in a peppy voice. This caused Fandroid to jump, almost falling out of his chair. He had only just started the game, but what he was still spooked, the small hovering robot. But he was still spooked, the small hovering robot. Melody, don't sneak up on me like that. You nearly gave me a heart attack, Fandroid said in a panicked voice. Melody giggled. Whoops, sorry Fandroid, she said with a small smile. Fandroid situated himself again and looked back at her. And to answer your question, I'm just playing this horror game called Broken Wires. It's already freaking me out, big time. The robot played around with his clawed hands. Melody nodded. Oh, so you're playing a horror game. That's cool. Just don't get too spooked. The small robot giggled before hovering back into the room she was previously in. Fandroid let out a small sigh of relief. All right, back to this creepy thing. He grabbed hold of his mouse once more and continued the game. The only thing that made him feel unsettled was the fact there were post-it notes on the wall saying, Watch out for the virus. 
Virus? What virus? He started to panic. I don't want a virus. He took a minute to calm himself, remembering it was still only just a game and that he needed to progress further. After another few more minutes of walking around, he came across another note. He clicked on it and popped up the message. Oh, never mind. You are the virus, causing Fandroid to become even more paranoid. He clicked out of the message, still freaking out. W what does that mean? I'm the virus? How am I a virus? Fandroid was still startled at this point. He looked around his room, trying to calm down once more, but nothing seemed to help at this point. Before he took another step in the game, the screen glitches for a slight second, startling Fandroid. What was that? He moves the mouse to look around the room once more. The screen glitches once again. The robot rolled back in his chair and got down to check his computer monitor, for he thought he may have kicked it by accident and caused the screen to mess up. However, he didn't see any damage towards the monitor, nor any of the other things around it from what he could tell. He looked over it one last time only to see one of the wires were unplugged. He reached back to plug it back in, but after he grabbed it, a jolt of electricity shocked his arm. Fandroid immediately let go of the cord and held his arm. Ow! I didn't expect that to happen. How did the wire get unplugged in the first place? Looking back at the cords, he saw that the cord he had tried plugging in was snapped in half. Must have yanked the cord when jumping back. Whoops! He let out a nervous chuckle. He scooted away from the cord, hoping that it wouldn't affect the screen, but of course it does, but not in the way he was expecting to. His screen looked like a messed up signal you get on a TV, with a bad connection, and parts of the screen appeared shattered. This surprised Fandroid. He wasn't expecting this to happen to screen just because a small cord snapping. He looked around his room a tiny bit, hoping that he wasn't being pranked by anyone, or anything for that matter. He saw nothing in his room, to his relief, and looked back at the computer screen. But as he turned his head, something shocked the back of his head, sending a jolt of electricity through his cords and other cables inside the, his robot structure. This caused him to black out and fall screen first onto the floor. By the time Fandroid woke up again, he found himself laying in his bed with an ice pack on his head. Melody was hovering beside him with a worried expression upon her face. The musical robot had no idea what happened. All he knew was that something had shocked him and made him black out. He knew nothing else. What happened, Melody? Why do I have an ice pack on my head? Fandroid spoke in a wobbly tone. Melody looked him in the eyes. I heard a thud come from in here, so I came to check it out. That's when I saw you laying unconscious on the floor with a few of your wires sticking out of your neck and from the back of your head. I had to get help from someone in the neighborhood since I don't exactly have any arms or hands. But they were very kind and agreed to help you fix the wires and get you into bed. I just brought the ice pack. She gave him a soft smile. Fandroid was a tad bit shocked. He had no idea that she had done all that stuff for him just because of a small injury, or so he thought anyway. Melody told him of how long it took to fix his head and neck, which was at least two or so hours, as well as getting him into the bed due to how heavy he was since he was still made of heavy metal material. Fandroid looked her in the eyes with a tired expression on his screen. Dang, I thought I'd only been out for like five minutes, not two hours. Sorry for scaring you. He looked away, slightly ashamed. Melody hovered near his face and lightly placed her head against Fandroid's. No need to apologize. It's quite all right. Fandroid let out a soft chuckle. If you say so, Melody, I'm still a bit tired though, so I'm gonna try to fall asleep, okay? Melody nodded and hovered towards the door. Fandroid slowly started to lose consciousness again, and before he knew it, he was out like a light. Melody saw him pass out and let out a giggle before hovering out of the room. 
As Fenroid slept, his screen started to glitch. His arm twitched a small bit as he laid unconscious in his bed. It was about 11.40 at night when Fandroid was awoken by a scary dream. W Whoa, that was freaky. Really freaky. Was that me or in my own dream? Well, if it was, I don't want to find out, that's for sure. He said to himself as he let out a yawn. He noticed that his yawning glitched a bit and made him choke a tiny bit. Ow! My throat! He wheezed softly as he tried to figure out what caused him to glitch. That's when his screen flickered, making his head hurt worse than any other headache you can imagine. The robot clutches his head with his claws, trying his best to ignore the major headache he was experiencing. His screen continued glitching and flickering, causing the headache to get worse until he overheated. The metal patch on the back of his head started to steam up. Fandroid tried to fill himself off, but nothing seemed to help. It just made it worse to where the metal patch started melting. This caused Fandroid to cry out in pain as the hot metal rolled down the back of his head. He got out of his bed and managed to make his way to the bathroom. He looked into the mirror for a brief moment before his screen blacked out again, causing the robot to black out and fall face first into the sink. After a few minutes had passed, Fandroid woke up again, still being in the bathroom. He knew something bad had happened due to the lack of eyesight on one side of his screen. He pulled himself up into the bathroom tile and looked at the mirror. Wires were sticking out from the back of his head, having an animated appearance to them as they flickered ever so often. The metal patch on the back of his head was fully melted off, exposing the whole back of his head. As he looked into the mirror, he saw the other half of his face. It was completely shattered due to the impact of the sink when he passed out so abruptly. He held a claw up to the shattered portion of his face and let out a shaky robotic gasp. He was horrified as what was happening to him in such short events. Fandroid stepped away from the mirror and bumped into the wall behind him. He was terrified of his appearance. His screen glitches a tiny bit, spooking the robot as a result. A few of the wires that were sticking out from the back of his box head started to spark, causing him to worry more than he already was. The robot held his head against rather gently this time, trying to gather what was happening in the first place. Melody hovered into Fandroid's room to check on the other robot, but saw that he wasn't in his bed anymore. The only thing she could assume was that he was in the bathroom cleaning his screen or something. She made her way to the bathroom and saw what had become of the robot. She was horrified to see what happened to his appearance. Floating back a small bit, she spoke up. Fandroid, what happened to you? She asked in an extremely concerned tone. Her tone startled the thinking robot, causing Fandroid to ram backward into the wall behind him, bending a few of the sparking wires. Ow! Fandroid yelled out in pain as he felt each individual wire bend out of shape against the wall. Melody gasped and zoomed over to Fandroid's side. Oh gosh, I didn't mean to scare you. Are you alright? The smaller robot had a scarce tone in her voice. Fandroid groaned in pain as he moved his head off the wall. The wires remained bent on the back of his head. The musical robot looked at Melody, his screen flickering ever so often. Yeah, I'm fine. You just stoned me. Is that's all, he said, rubbing his neck. Melody looked at the shadow side of Fandroid's screen, still really worried about what happened while she was away. So, what happened to your face? The smaller robot asked with concern. Fandroid put a claw up to the shattered screen and let out a shaky sigh. I don't know, to be honest. I just came in here to see what was going on with the back of my head when I suddenly blacked out and fell into the sink. Or, I think I fell into the sink. I'm not sure. His screen glitches. Melody sighs. Well, at least you're alright. The smaller robot smiled softly. Fandral chuckled a bit before his screen glitches again, spooking him. Melody was also spooked by the sudden glitch in the screen, but she spotted something off about it. The shattered side of the screen was turning a light shade of red. This worried the small robot. Fandray didn't notice this, of course, but he was still concerned about what was happening to himself. Fandroid tried to gather himself again as to what was going on, 
but as he was about trying to explain what was going on, his screen flashes red, then goes completely black. The robot falls to his knees, making a loud clunk sound. Fendroid's expression drops and turns into a panicked one. Fendroid! Oh, OMG, gosh! The Fandroid, the smaller robot was freaking out as she saw her friend collapse to his knees. Fandroid screen flashes back on again, but there was no face that was visible upon it. It's just a blank blue screen was seen. Melody calmed down a bit, but was a bit nervous by the lack of face on Fandroid's screen. Fandroid? Her voice was a bit shaky as he spoke. Fandroid's head turned to her. Screen still blank as the snowy plain. Melody froze in her tracks, terrified by the fact that Fandroid seemed to be shut off yet still up and active. Melody hovered away from Fandroid, hoping nothing bad would happen to both her and her best friend. Fandroid stares at the smaller robot for a few moments before finally moving any further. He began to get on his feet again, and before Melody knew it, the other robot was looming over her in an uncanny way. This startled Melody so bad that she zoomed out of the room and back into the living room. Fandroid watched as the smaller robot rushed out of the room before he started to aimlessly walk into his room again, not being in any sort of control of his body. The musical robot looked around the room before going over to his computer. Fandroid noticed the screen to the computer was still on, the live stream was still active. He read most of the comments people have been posting, and most were talking about how scared they were for Fandroid's condition. The robot didn't seem to pay any attention to these comments, however. He turned the face cam back on, showing his blank screen to all his viewers. Once the viewers saw his face, they immediately started to panic. They knew something bad had happened to the YouTuber, but they knew they couldn't do anything to help him. Fandroid managed to read the terrified viewer comments and chuckled rather darkly at them. He thought it was a bit funny. He grabbed hold of the mouse that was laying on the floor and put it back on the mouse pad. He reopened the game he was playing before all this crazy stuff began happening broken wires. His screen slowly just start to a light red color as the screen changed. The live chat was going crazy. Many of the comments telling Fandroid to snap out of it or to stop playing the game. They were all worried for Fandroid. The robot began to play the horror game once again. This time he wasn't scared of the outcome that was to approach. One of the many commenters said they knew how to save Fandroid from this weird state. All they needed to do was to hack into the game Fandroid was playing before he got too far into it. Fandroid saw this comment and he became discouraged. The robot tried to turn the live chat off, but it was no use. The hacker had already disabled Fandroid from turning it off. The robot let out a gritch growl as he continued to play further and further, finding more of the notes that had strange ciphers on them. He seemed to understand them though. The others just didn't know what they meant, causing them to worry more. It was at least a good 10 minutes before the hacker got into the game Fandroid was playing, and before he knew it, the game got shut off. Fandroid was about to start raging, but his screen got shut off once more. The wires on the back of his head sparked. The hacker had finished alright. Fandroid gave no answer though. He was out like a light. Melody noticed the commotion had stopped, so she hovered back into Fandroid's room once more to check on him. To her surprise, the other robot was knocked out completely. She was curious as to what happened, but decided to wait till later to ask him. That next morning, Fandroid woke up to see Melody at his side, fast asleep. The shattered side of his screen had been covered up with a cloth just for safety precautions, he supposed. The musical robot had no memory of what happened yesterday or last night. It's like his entire memory bank was erased. He saw another guest in his room. However, it was the hacker that saved him. He just had no memory of him. Fandroid sat up in his bed and let out a soft groan. He looked at the person with a tired look on his screen. Who are you? He rubbed the side of his head a bit. Let's just say I'm the one who saved you from, the dead, from a deadly virus. One that caused you to have murderous intentions. The hacker crossed his arms. 
Fandroid's face changed from a tired expression to a shocked one in seconds. M -m murderous tensions? I would never want to kill anyone! The robot started to panic. You don't have to worry about it anymore. I took care of it last night through your live stream. Fandroid was still in disbelief. You don't have to believe me, but I would suggest looking at audio comments from last night, dude. But I gotta get going. I just wanted to see if you're alright. See you in the next stream. The hacker waved to him before walking out. Fandroid just watched as the person left his room, still in shock of what he had just heard. He looked over at Melody, who was snuggled against Fandroid's arm. The robot gave a soft smile and lay back down, hugging the smaller bot close to him for comfort. Melody giggled a bit, realizing Fandroid had hugged her. Fandroid didn't fall asleep again though, he stayed awake trying to remember what happened last night, but he remembered nothing whatsoever. This frustrated him greatly, for he wanted to know what had happened. But I guess he would just have to look over his video recording from last night to see what the big deal was. As he tried to get up, Melody nudged his arm a bit, telling him to stop moving. Fandroid sighed and gave him a soft smile. He didn't want to disturb her sleep. He lay back against the rim of the bed and stared at the ceiling, thinking deeply, trying to remember last night. He sighed in discontent, for he just wanted wanted to know the truth about this so-called virus the hacker mentioned, but for the meantime, he lay down on the bed fully and hugged Melody close to him. Melody giggles and snuggles against the other robot's chest, trying to get comfortable again. Fandroid stayed awake still, chucking quietly at Melody's actions while she slept. After a few minutes of this, he found himself growing tired. He didn't want to fall asleep just yet, but something was forcing himself to shut down. His screen glitches and his screen goes completely blank once more. The screen was no longer a light blue, but instead a pitch black. The cracked side of his screen showing up more plainly. The robot sits up completely not caring if Melody woke up or not, and turns his head to look at the smaller robot beside him. A sinister grin grew onto his face as he began to chuckle darkly. One of his claw hands shapes itself into what looks like a knife. Fandroid raises this hand a bit above Melody before throwing his arm down to jab the knife straight through Melody's small screen, causing the screen to shatter completely and spark frantically. A slight tear of oil dropped from the bottom of Fandroid's cube head, getting onto the bed and staining it. Then Fandroid looks at you smirk still visible. He chuckles once more and raises the oil cover knife one last time before stabbing your screen, shattering into bits. You can't stop this virus. It will always continue to spread, no matter what you do. <sighs> Man. <laughs> That was really scary. Hey everyone, I hope you enjoyed this uh, creepypasta reading that I had edited and re-uploaded to this YouTube channel. If you like it, be sure to like, comment, and subscribe to my YouTube channel and ring the bell for more videos. And don't forget to check out my social media, DeviantArt, and of course uh, my Twitch channel. So uh, thank you so much for watching this video, and I will catch you all on the flip side.